Mad Weaver Sports Knot. Um, you're locked in. You've got a lot of teammates who need to join you. How do you kind of balance it within the four team of kind of serving all those needs? Uh, we have enough trouble serving our own needs. <laughs> so, you know, I think a lot of that stuff just plays out. And, and when you have the when you have the opportunity to, to put yourself in a position to, you know, to to help, the, you, you try to help as, as much as you can and, and go from there. So it's just, you know, I've, I've always found it harder to try to coordinate something and, and make it all work because it all seems to get mixed up. And and so you just you go race and, and see when those opportunities fall to, to push and, and stay in line and, and do those types of things. And then kind of a big picture question, you won two Xfinity championships, kind of the old school way. Uh, you won the first elimination championship in 14, arguably had one taken from you in 20. When you kind of look at the current dynamic, kind of holistically, the pros and cons, what do you think of the current way that we decide a champion? Well, you don't want them like Earnhardt did. <laughs> you know, I think, um, you know, definitely as you as you look at it, what we do, it's, it's um, you know, it's just, it's different, right? You know, so we're we're definitely in the entertainment business to, to make things exciting. And, you know, I think as you look at the, the last race and, and it's definitely, you know, there's a lot that goes into it, but it, it definitely doesn't reflect the whole year. And I think our, our years are definitely probably proof of that just because of the fact in, in 14, um, we won the right race. In 15, we didn't win the right race. and 20, we didn't win the right race. And, and so, you know, I think it just, um, I guess as long as you're in it enough, you it cycles out and, and circles back. So, you know, I think it's, I can see it both ways. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit on the other side of the fence and, and want it exciting. And, you know, I think from a competitor standpoint, you, 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 you I've raced it both ways. And, and I think, um, you know, it's a long season and there's a lot, lot to it to come down to, to one race. All right, let's go ahead and go to Greg. Over here, Kevin, Greg Engel Forbes. Um, as you look at, you know, the end and you're done and all that stuff, and, you know, you, you, one of the things I'm sure you're not going to miss is having to serve as sponsors as a driver, you know, and make sure you get the right suit on and all that. Um, but as you got those, have you built up those relationships over the years with the different sponsors? And then you've got KHI on the other side. Have you been able to leverage some of that in order to maybe – bring it into the KHI fold or is that always been, is there always like a delineation line where you don't mix the two, if that makes sense? I don't know that we've actually will lose a sponsor. So, you know, I think as, as you go forward, there will be different, obviously. I think there'll be, you know, the, the, the partnerships that, that we've managed and are a part of. And um, I don't know that I still won't have a relationship with every one of them. So, you know, I think as, as you move forward, I think that's one of the more rewarding pieces that has come out of this whole puzzle are the, are the relationships. And, and then also, you know, being a part of, of the conversations and, um, you know, the management group and, and helping find them things that fit their new budgets and, and new ideas and, and who, the, you know, who, who and where you place those, those sponsorship dollars uh, has, has been interesting. So... Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's obviously, there's a lot of moving pieces, um, but we will have good relationships with many of our current partners as we go forward. And, and without naming it, was there a track that you would not want to ever race on again that you're like, oh my God, I'm glad I don't have to race there anymore? Mm-hmm. Indy Road Course. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to Jordan and then Jeff. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Um, what Have you seen anything different from Ricky Stenhouse Jr. this year on the racetrack from years past? You know, I think, I think um, Rick, look, Ricky's mature, right? You know, he's been around this a long time, and I would, I would put him in the, in, in the mature category. And I think, um, you know, from, from his standpoint, I think that the car's rolling a lot more this year for a number of reasons. Um, you know, I think they've done a good job in managing – the days when the car is not running good. I think they've done a good job of, I think Mike's done a good job with Ricky. I think Ricky has a lot of trust in Mike. Um, you know, so I think that whole group has, has kind of matured together and made more out of their situation than what they have in the past because, you know, they've, they've finished, finished a lot more races and, and 
obviously won the Daytona 500 and, and you know, had several good runs uh, th throughout, the, throughout the season. So they're just not all going to be good. I mean, you're just going to show up on, in some of these days and, and you're just going to be off. And you just, you know, it's, it's hard to figure out what you need to do if the car's wadded up and, and, and you know, you're having to analyze something just by theory and instead of, instead of everything that goes with having the car in one piece. So, um, so I think they've just done a better job as a total group. And, you know, Ricky's fallen into that category. And, and, but I think that that crew chief driver combination is, is super important as to how the driver's confidence goes and the way things work. Thank you. Jeff. Kevin, a lot gets made about how you guys always seem to maximize every week, and, and even if you guys don't have the car, you seem to get up there in the top 10. Like, how do you do that? Well, I think it's part of that same conversation that we just had, right? You know, you, 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 have, to keep the, you have to keep the car rolling, and you have to be able to just grind away and make your car better throughout the day and, and stay in the game and, and be able to, to reset as a group to hope that every time you – Pit or some, and when things aren't going right, that the car is going to get better. And so, you know, I think a lot of that comes with, and, and I tell a lot of our young drivers this, they say, well, my car's not good. I'm like, well, why? I said, you're, you're a big part of that process. The driver's the big part of the process that, that really helps keep everything under control as far as the direction of the car. Is it tight for aero reasons, mechanical reasons, and, and understanding, um, you know how to how to push things forward to to do that. So, um, you know, I think I think for us we just grind away and and keep ourselves in contention and do do as many little things right. And and you know I think that that feedback back and forth, uh, driver crew chief goes right back to the same conversation of of making yourself um, useful as a as an asset inside the car to be able to give the information of of what's wrong with the car. So you know I think grinding away and and just always believe in that that it's going to get better after this adjustment and, and resetting and, and going again good happy let's talk a little bit about beyond here first race darlington obviously you've had success there in the past but having that as the first race in the playoffs how do you what, what are your thoughts as you get ready to roll in on that one i you know what i don't have any thoughts i don't have any any, any i just i, I Every time I put thought into, you know, we should run good here, we should run good there, it seems like it, you know, it, it's, it could be the opposite. So, you know, I think Darlington has been a, a good racetrack for us in the past, and, and um, you know, we've had good finishes there and always been one of my favorite places to race. And, but, you know, I think looking at predicting what you're going to do is, is really not in the cards anymore just because, you know, sometimes you show up and it's just completely, completely different. So... Hopefully it goes like it has in the past and, and because Darlington has been a great place for us. I'll say pretty fair on that, but what about the first three races? You like the grouping of the three races for the first round? I'm still worried about Daytona, so I haven't got to the third third uh, the group of three yet. So we'll go from we'll go from you got me to go to Darlington. So where's the next two? Huh? Kansas. Okay. Kansas and Bristol. It should be fine. But I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Hey, Kevin. Chris Gollin here with News Daytona Beach. Um, you've been coming to Daytona for over 20 years now, and this is shaping up to be your last time here in the media center as a driver, given you don't win tomorrow. Um, I was wondering, other than the obvious, which would be winning the Daytona 500, what are your, some of your, your favorite memories or just things that stand out over your career at Daytona? When I first started, we, we spent a lot of time here um, testing and, and preseason testing, and we'd come back and test some of our super speedway stuff. And, and you know, I think for, for me, I still remember driving in that tunnel for the first time to, to test here and, and realizing that you were getting ready to race for real. Uh, because when you drove into the Daytona International Speedway, you knew that, that things were, um, you were, you were progressing in the right direction. So. Um, you know, if I think outside of, of the Daytona 500 and, and you know, the, the, the summer wins and, the, you know, the shootout and all the different things that we've been fortunate to be a part of, you know, from a success standpoint here and wins uh, as an owner in the, in the Bush Series. And there's just been a lot of, lot of great things. But, look, this is the pinnacle of our sport. And, and um, 
you know, being able to, to race here has been an honor, but always what you were shooting for in your career, because you knew if you were racing at Daytona, you had, you were, you were on a, on a good path. So, um, but I'll never forget driving in here the, the very first time and, and looking at the racetrack when it was empty and, and, you know, thinking, um, sitting on the grid out there because you used to sit there for hours as, as you waited your turn to, to go out. And, you know, I, w I was sitting there and, and they told me, they said, all right, when you go, you got to go out and hold it wide open. And I had never been here before. And it was, it's half, I mean, when you're sitting at the end of pit road, it's half as narrow as, as Talladega. So it was, um, it was an interesting first lap, but I'll never forget it. Yep. All right, Holly and then Lee. Hi, Kevin. Um, I don't know if you would consider yourself a sentimental person or not, but I'm curious if so far this season there's been a facility that you went to or something that was given to you or something that really stood out to you that will mean quite a lot as you look at this being your last season racing. And secondly, how hard will it be for you to kind of take all of that sentiment in when you're racing for a championship in the last 10 races? I imagine your mind might be in a yeah. different place. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not... You know, I, I think for I think for for me, when you when you look around and you you see the forever signs and and you see, um, you know, the different things that that each particular racetrack has done, and then, you know, you listen to the fans this year, and you and you really get a you really get a great idea of of just um, how important they coming back and doing this last year, and and you know, putting the the forever um, logo around it, and and going to each track and and letting them do what they want to do and, and be a part of that is, it's important. I may have thought it was silly when we started. And, you know, I think as you look back at it and, and I listen to those conversations with our group at SHR and just, you know, the, the way that, that Tony did his and the way that he thought he should have done some things, um, those, those things are, are fun. It's been, it's been fun just because of the fact that I, I don't have to worry about what people think. Um, you can just listen and, and realize that you've had a great impact on, on the sport and, and the fans appreciate the effort and, and the things that have gone into, whether it be driving or off the track or um, showing the emotion of, of you know, being mad or whatever the, whatever the instance is, to hear all those stories and, and let people um, you know, tell you about all those different situations and, and see the different pictures and things at the racetrack from all the success at, at certain tracks. And, and um, you know, for me, that's not something I would ever do because I look at it as bragging. But at this particular point, it is what it is, right? You know, it's, it's success at, at different places. We've been very fortunate to be successful and win races and, and, and have an impact. And, you know, I think being able to wrap my arms around all that and, and say, Okay, I'm I'm good with this. Let's just let's enjoy it. Um, so it's it's been it's been enjoyable um, just because of the fact that some of the things that the pictures and different things that I've seen I forgot that we actually did uh, or different moments or you know stuff that that fans bring up or whatever the whatever the instance is. It's been it's been fun to to be a part and and go back and and think about all those things that that were a part of that particular moment. So um, so it's been it's been good and. and you know, Marcus Smith was just a, he was a huge part of, of saying, you got to come back and do this this way, and, you know, for the tracks and for the fans and, and for the sport. And I was like, oh, man, I, I don't know. And, and, you know, now that we've, we've, we've gone through this part of the season and, and been through all the things that, we, that we've been through, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun uh, to, to go back and reflect on so many things. Lee? Lee Spencer, catch fans. For as many times as you've been here, raced in the pack, or you know even Talladega, but particularly here since we're here, um, can you explain to lay people what it's like being in that draft to have all those cars around you going at that rate of speed and trying to process everything that's coming in your ear, whether from Rodney or Spotter, um, you know other people, and just keep it all straight and, and keep mm -hmm. your car in line and you know do the deal. Yeah, well, it, there's a lot of information to process. And, and I think, you know, just um, w when you're in this every week, you kind of take for granted uh, everything that's that's happening around you and the things that you that you do on a weekly basis. And, you know, it's just like Ross and I talking right there that we're going to go fire the car up and leave pit road wide open and just go run a qualifying lap just because that's what it is. Right. And, and Typically, you would you would be somewhat cautious of of trying to put yourself in a position to uh, at least make sure everything was okay. And today, you put yourself in a position to just go out there and hope 
you know, know that, that you've, you've got to do what you got to do. And if it's not okay, then it is what it is. And, and so, um, but as far as the racing goes, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's different here than it used to be before they repaved it because handling was just so much of a, an aspect of, of what we did here with the bumps and the worn out asphalt and the, the pack would spread out. And now the pack doesn't really, doesn't really spread out. And, and you know, it's just a, it's a lot narrower than, than Talladega was or is. And, and, you know, I think, um, you know, there's just the track position is, is super important and you want to stay up in the front and, and miss the wreck. But um, there is a lot of information that is that is going on in, inside of your head and and with the spotter and the crew chief and crew chief doesn't get to talk much the spotter talks talks more than anybody anybody so it's um there's definitely a lot to process and to kind of follow up on on darlington 14 13 of the last 14 starts at darlington uh were with rodney and I think all but one of those starts with Rodney, you finished in the top 10, including like 11 top fives. You know, your relationship with Rodney, does he love Darlington as much as you do? And is it that kind of that cohesion between you that is added to that success? Well, I think when you compare that to some of the other tracks, it's probably not that good, it's, but it's still, they're still pretty good. Um, but Darlington is just a place that, that um, you know, I enjoy racing and, and he enjoys going to. and. I think there's just places that that you just you know things just click and and I think for for me that kind of fits my driving style and and not having to worry about going super fast the first two or three laps and and just making the car go over the long run and being precise and not not um, you know taking too many chances as as you go throughout the day to to tear up your car um, and and make it to the end so um, it's just a it's a racetrack that kind of fits fits what we do and you know I think through the through the years it's just been a it's just been a really good place for us so hopefully it stays that way for one more. Jordan Bianchi the Athletic um, a lot of talk this week about drafting and teammates and how you support one another I'm curious within track house is there a conversation that needs to be had about you know hey if Daniel needs help you're gonna have to be there for him or anything like that? I'm there for my amigo all the time man <laughs> Uh, yeah, we've already had those conversations. We had them with GM and Chevrolet, and we know the bigger picture of of, um, of the bow tie and what's important. And um, yeah, we can do a lot of we can do a lot of good and for the one car and and help you know people where we can. And um, tomorrow night will be a key moment to do that. When was the uh, conversations with GM and uh, what was said in there? Uh, Monday, and just uh, just getting it right together, just to talk. Um, and uh, and just you know, hear what people's um, plans are and and philosophies. Um, right? There's a million ways you can go about this race, um, and I think well, for, I know for me, I can't speak for any, anybody else, but my mind kind of like sways with the wind on what I think is going to work uh, because you look at statistics and you look at the history of it, and it you can read it like one way or you can read it the complete 180 um, of what's successful here. So. Um, yeah, just, just getting us all in a room and um, hearing everybody out. Right here in the front. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. So all of that aside, you know, trying to get Daniel in, that's super important. On the other hand, it's a win at Daytona. Um, you of all people know how much one point could matter come November or October as well. So how much do you try to balance the needs for the entire organization, but also kind of your personal ambitions too? Personally, I'm in Darlington <laughs> already. I mean, I hate to, I don't hate to say it because it's the truth. Um, you know, we, we've put effort in, and we have a, a car that we think can go can go be competitive, and we'll we'll play the race out as it comes. But um, I've I've learned to not come here with any grand plan. Um, yes, if there's a stage point, if there's a win, go for it. Um, but I plan on being I said it before. I plan on being backwards in the grass at 200 miles an hour. And if I don't hit anything too hard and I can get back to pit road with minimal damage to the bottom of the car, I'll still have a shot to win. So, um, you know, I, I don't I don't get upset when stuff happens at these places anymore. I used to be so on edge through the truck series. And then uh, I heard an old veteran say that, and it made a lot of sense. And it made my weeks leading up to these races a lot easier. And uh, so, you know, mentally, I've already started, we've already been fully preparing for Darlington. And then lastly, um, I feel like as both a fan and now as a driver, 
all you've really known is the current playoff format or a, a chase for the championship. So you probably don't think about how things used to be because that really didn't apply to you. How do you feel about being a part of this kind of pressure cooker playoff year after year? Do you, do you enjoy that? I, I actually do think about that because I was a fan and I did, you know, follow the points whenever it was five points per position and, and season long points. Um, and, and you got points for leading laps and you got all and you know, this other stuff. Um, and, and this is the last week. It's very easy to look at the points and see that we've fallen from within or being the points leader early in, earlier in the year, we're over a hundred points out now. I don't think with 11 races to go, we would have a realistic shot to go win a championship. So I love it. I mean, it gives us a real shot. It gives somebody like Chase, who's missed races a shot, Alex, right? Like guys that are, we're hundred, are hundreds of points back and have missed races would never have been in contention. So um, I love it because um, it, it allows for um, allows for me to have a shot. I, I've had the points lead. We've lost it. We've given up over 100 points, and um, we wouldn't have a shot without it. We're going to go to Jeff back there and then to Holly and then to Lee here in the front. Ross, in three and a half months, you have, I think, one top five and three top tens. Obviously, for the playoffs, that's not going to be enough, as you know. So what's your level of confidence that you guys can pick it up from here and start getting better results in the playoffs? My one team and driving the race cars, uh, yeah, I, I see the stats. We look at it. We've, we've looked at it um, with, with GM this, just this week of just how, how the season's laid out compared to last year, and it's just a very glaring thing when you click on finishing position. Uh, but there's a lot more to be said for – average running position um, and I'm not finishing where we're running um, you know the pace can be argued um, was better last year but uh, running position was similar so there's a lot of things and details you can dig into and see and we just did that this week and it honestly made me feel okay because I know where we can be better and I know that I can be better at finishing these races and um, I I, I <laughs> I got to tell you, I was a lot more nervous sitting up here last time I was at this desk announcing our multi-year contract extension and new contract than I am right now going into the playoffs, which is a really cool feeling. Um, those were nerves and pressure for another reason of just getting it out and, and one of the worst kept secrets, second worst kept secret, I guess we've had this year. Um, but I have, I had, I had more pressure sitting up here then than I do now with Darlington, Kansas, Bristol coming up this month. Go to Holly here in the front, and then Lee. Hi, Ross. Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. You kind of alluded to this a little bit, but do you, what are you expecting out of the race? Because there are so many people that need a win, that can get that win. Is there more strategy involved than normal, or do you expect it to be, um, you know, as Daytona often <laughs> is? Uh, you know, what, what are your realistic expectations of this race, and is it different from the Daytona 500 because it sets the playoff field? Well, I think Ricky was just up here. He'd argue that it set his playoff field in February, so and he got a day, he won the Daytona 500. So um, that is uh, nothing to, to not look at um, in, coming here in February, and it's a great reminder for everybody that you can just set your season to a basically a permanent win for the year if you win the Daytona 500. That's a lifetime achievement like Ricky was able to accomplish. Um, but here, what do I expect? Lee? Yeah, I expect all of it. Like, I expect everything, all the highlights that we're going to see, all the highlights we know. Um, you know, I don't expect a ton of cars to be running at the end. would probably be the only thing I could really confidently say I expect. Everything else is I could expect all of it. Um, and then for me, I can only control my, my variables that I can, you know, directly control. So that's saving fuel. That's getting on and off pit road correctly. Um, staying with my group that we pit with the best I can staying in the pit stall long enough while Brooke, our gas man fuels the car and we get the right amount of fuel in it each stop so that we don't have to take more fuel later. Um, those are the things that I can control. After a decade in NASCAR, you had a breakout season at the top level last year. What did you learn going through each of the the playoff rounds, um, you know, and getting all the way as far as you did in the playoffs that you can take with you this season? Yeah, a lot. I learned a lot. 
Uh, I learned a lot about myself and, and our group at Trackhouse because there was, I had questions of, could we step up? Um, there was some similar comments to what Jeff said last year about, you know, some stats that were looking a little lower. Um, and we went to, we went to those races to Darlington and we were fast and we, we did what we needed to do. We kept air in the tires at the Texas race where everybody was blowing tires. And like my group did everything right to not blow a tire. We weren't the fastest car, but we did the things we needed to do to, to survive and advance, survive and advance. Um, that's no different now. I can't let, you know, the Nashville win, um, or, or everything that's happened since the playoffs last year affect the fact that I just know we have to go week by week and then the Roval haunts me. I mean, that, that wreck partway through that race um, should have taken us out. And we were, by some gift, given another chance. And we took full advantage of it in that, in that round of eight. Um, so minimizing those mistakes. Um, we did so good those other nine races. And the Roval stands out as the one. And I got away with it. Um, but we'll, um, yeah, all that, all that plays into account. And... Um, there's a corner I won't crash at at the Roval this year. I have worked really hard. I'm not saying it won't happen, but turn two at the Roval. I should go slow enough through there this year that we don't crash because that, that could have been really bad. And you said you already had your – you were already focused on Darlington. I bet after Darlington this spring you had a lot of sleepless nights. And so what did you learn from that experience and how will you approach racing at Darlington moving forward different? Well, what happened in the spring caused me not to win, and I don't like to lose, so I'm not going to do that again, but I'm still going to go race, and Larson and I have had some great battles this year. Um, we were side-by-side side a couple of times late in the race last week at Watkins Glen, and then at the end of the race, it wasn't me that was running into everybody at the end. It was, I was watching it in my camera laughing, uh, the rearview camera, um, because I was like, yes, it's not me, <laughs> it's them. <laughs> Um, and, and so, um, you know, I did have some sleepless nights after, but I also learned a lot from that too. And, and talking to Mr. Hendrick was, when you bring it up, um, that was, that was some really cool conversations and he was great and he had some great advice and I've lived by some of the words he was nice enough to give me, um, that early morning we talked and, um. You know, I'll never forget that conversation, good or bad. I don't like the reasons that it came about, but um, I like that talk, so I listen. And uh, I've, I've taken what he said to heart and um, been better for it. How's it going, Ricky? Uh, Chris Gollin from WNDB. Um, so I was just wondering, you're obviously you're locked into the playoffs with your win here in February, so you're, you, know, you don't have to race for your season like other guys do, but... You know, it would be hard not to have a sense of confidence after that win. So with all that in mind, how hard do you plan on pushing it tomorrow night to maybe try and do the Daytona sweep? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're here for is is to, you know, be back in victory lane, um, get my uh, second uh, summer race here, um, you know, win. So, you know, for us, we're looking at, you know, the playoff points that we could we could take, um, you know, to, to the playoffs. So either, you know, by stage wins or, or obviously, you know, another five points went in the race. So, um, you know, those are the, the benefits that we, that we can take out of Daytona and, and the things that we're looking for. So, um, you know, how we do that, I'm not sure yet. You know, I think on one hand, you know, this race generally is, kind of crazy. Um, obviously last year was a little bit different with, you know, kind of one instance taking everybody out of the race, but not really anybody's fault. So I don't know, like I know the, the cars that have to win have to make it to the end of the race. Right. So they don't really care about stage points. I mean, there's a couple that care about stage points, you know, for us. So hopefully, you know, that leaves us, you know, racing the ones that are already locked in for, for maybe some stage wins or something. So just kind of see how it plays out and kind of adjust our race, you know, kind of lap by lap or, or you know, kind of stage by stage, see, see where we shake out. Matt and then Lee. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. Uh, you won your two Xfinity championships, the old school kind of season long way, and you've also been in a couple of these elimination style format years. Um, now that we've kind of done this for a decade or so, how do you kind of weigh the pros and cons of the way we used to do it versus the way we do now? 
Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, it's it's exciting. You know, I think it keeps keeps the fans engaged uh, the way we have it. Um, but that being said, it would still be a great points battle right now. You know, going in, um, you know, with eleven races left, I think it would still be, uh, you know, a really good you know championship battle. You know, I look at. You know, I'm watching the tour championship right now and, and looking at the way, you know, they eliminate guys and, uh, you know, set themselves up for a golf tournament at the end of the season. And, you know, it's handicapped, but, you know, we got we got four guys that, that go for a championship at, at the end of the at the end of the year. So, you know, I think everybody, you know, every sport has, has done something, you know, to make it exciting, um, you know, make their playoffs a little bit you know, more intense, uh, over the years. And so, um, you know, I enjoyed the Xfinity, uh, you know, the, the nationwide series championships. I, I love the, you know, it was a season long, um, deal, but, um, you know, at the, at the point I'm in now, I'm, I'm looking forward to the playoffs and the opportunity to, to, to race for a championship that way. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've not been leading going into the playoffs to really have a, a, strong feeling one way or the other i guess and then um you kind of addressed it earlier but five playoff points to win the race maybe two more for the two stage wins do you kind of view this race as is, is it binary for you it's either put ourselves in the position to win the race get the five or because people are trying to survive that's a chance to get the two and then it's two versus five yeah we talked about that in our meeting this week at the shop and you know you look at the cautions in this race and you look at how many finish this race and it's not near as many as, you know, other speedway races, it seems like. So, but again, like kind of what I said earlier is I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of guys that know that they have to make it to the end of the race to have an opportunity to, you know, make the playoffs. Right. So I'm hoping that that gives us a, a way to, you know, kind of get some track position, stay up front, battle for those stage wins. And, you know, seven points would go a long ways for us, uh, you know, in, in the round of, uh, of 16 and then and so on. So, you know, for me, that's that's really what what we're focused on. And and I hope that's how it plays out, uh, that you know, it won't be so chaotic at the, at the end of those stages. And, um, you know, we're battling for those stage wins and. And then ultimately the the win at the end of the day. We, oui. Lee Spencer, CatchFence dot com. I'm thinking you're looking at the first two rounds and you're saying, I can definitely win at Bristol. I can definitely win at Talladega. And if you know the stars align, you move on to the round of eight. I mean, is you know you think that those are your two best shots? Yeah, I think. You know, going into the first round, I, I really like all the racetracks. I uh, love Darlington, Kansas, and, and Bristol. I still feel like we've been so close at Bristol so many times. Um, would love to to get my first win there this year and um, you know, and then obviously move on. So, you know, for me, I, I'm focused on the first round. Uh, I did not know Talladega was in the second round, honestly. I have no idea what's in the second round. Um, but, you know, for us, just really kind of honed in on, on Darlington right now. Um, you know, I feel good about where our car is for, for Daytona. So, you know, we've, my guys have been, you know, kind of looking at, at Darlington this week and, um, you know, trying to prepare for that. We were good at Darlington, um, you know, earlier in the year, we had a, um, kind of misfortune with, with a flat left retire, uh, that we, you know, lost time under green, um, you know, pitting. So just, man, I, I feel really good about where we are as a team. Um, you know, I don't think we have to win in that first that first round to, to make it through by any means. So um, we'll go do our job each and every week and, and try and be perfect and, and let others make mistakes, um, you know, to move on through that round. We're going to come up here to Holly. Hey, Ricky. Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. This kind of goes right along into that. Where do you feel like your team is now? I mean, you got your win so early in the season. Now to actually how these months later have the playoffs starting. How do you feel like you guys are? Yeah, it's it's going to be real in, uh, you know, in a week, right? So, um, or I should say uh, after tomorrow, it's it's real. Um, you know, I feel like we've we've grown a lot as a team. We've gotten better at, at certain areas, um, you know, of our race team throughout the year and, and really kind of 
things have stuck out where we need to, to be better. And, and I feel like we've corrected some of that. I still feel like we have some issues that, that we are still working on and, you know, trying to clean up. And, and some of that's, you know, me as a race car driver, you know, getting to pit road, things on pit road, some race strategy calls that, that we've probably been a little bit off on and, and then, you know, car speed, um, you know, we've, we've struggled at on some racetracks, but, uh, I like the information that we have and, and the things that we've learned, uh, lately and, and feel like that'll, you know, put us in a good spot, you know, going forward. Um, but, but I like where we are, but yeah, it's, it's real now. Um, you know, we've, we've made the playoffs and, um, we got one more kind of, relaxed kind of freebie race and uh and then it's then it's game time all right we're gonna go back here to greg and then back there hey hey greg uh, <laughs> um <laughs> uh thank uh we talked a couple weeks ago on the podcast about this very thing to follow up on that uh greg and with forbes <laughs> yeah I, I wasn't drinking today um but you were on the podcast, we were talking about that, and thanks very much for, for taking the time out for that. But you were talking about having that relaxed attitude, and this is really the last race for that. Um, have you started? Have you guys started to kind of sort of pivot and get ready to, to kind of have that different kind of attitude um, and, and get that more serious, or is it going to be when you hit the ground at Darlington? Well, I mean, I mean we're serious every week. It's yeah. just, you know, the – the reality is next week is, you know, everything matters. Like, you know, when we have a bad Saturday, it, it, it matters. Um, you know, we've, we've had some bad Saturdays as far as qualifying goes and, you know, and it set us back, but, um, it hasn't been super detrimental. Uh, I think, you know, a bad Saturday in the playoffs, you know, is, is difficult to, to overcome. And so, you know, I think for us, it's, it's, we know that, you know, there's no mulligans, you know, once we start next week. And, um, you know, we, we're we done with the driving range. We're done done goofing off. So, um, you know, the you know we'll step up on the first tee next week and, you know, make sure that, that we're ready to go. And, and obviously you, you want to go all the way. You want to go – you want to – you know, that's it. You want to go all the way. But realistically, do you, how deep would you be satisfied to go? Or is that off the table? It's all or nothing. Uh, no, it's not all or nothing. I think for me, I mean, even if just say we were eliminated in the first round, I mean, we could still finish fifth in points, right? So there's a ton left to race for no matter what happens in the first round. And, you know, I think for us in, in seven, 2017, you know, we finished 11th in points, had a really good shot at finishing ninth in points, um, after getting eliminated in the third round, I believe. So, you know, for us, I mean, there's there's a lot to, to race for no matter what happens in that first round. All right, we're going to go back there and then up to Reed. Uh, Caleb Vessel, SpeedwayDigest.com. Ricky, this is the first time since February when you won the 500 that you're coming back to Daytona. What – what are the emotions like? I mean, you're back in the media center for the first time since that winning press conference. Excuse me. It was a lot more fun uh, coming <laughs> back in here after that. But, uh, but I mean, what, 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 what is that like to come back here after that big win? Yeah, it's, it's been special. Um, our pilot Jim got, got in to let us fly over the track. We did a circle around the track, uh, before we landed. That was pretty cool. And then, um, Going over the museum, seeing the car, and you know, in in there, um, you know, checking all the the things out in there was was special. Um, and then you know, unveiling our um, our our walk of fame there, um, you know, out in front of the museum. Uh, it just this race is is so big, right? You know, when you win the five hundred, and and you do a lot of things throughout the season, um, you know, based off of of winning this, and and it's been fun. I, I've enjoyed every second of it. You know, being able to promote our team, promote our win, promote the sport, and you know, for me, it's it it doesn't get old. And uh, so for me, it's been nice just to come in here, you know, kind of take it all in, look around, you know, walk through the garage. You know, it was so chaotic, you know, after the race, and you know, you're trying to celebrate, you're trying to somewhat get some sleep, knowing you got to get up the next morning early. Um, you know, so it's it's been nice to just kind of come in here and. Um, 
you know, know that you accomplished, you know, something great as a, as a race team. And, you know, now that that's over, um, you know, we can, we can try and get another one. All right, let's go up to Reed. And then if we have time, we'll hit you up here. Reed Spencer uh, with the NASCAR Wire. Um, obviously, you've got incentive to win this race, to win the stages. You've got points on the line and also a, a rare sweep, which hasn't been done all that many times. Um, but can you allow yourself an awareness of what's going on around you and trying not to affect who gets in the playoff and who doesn't? That's definitely, definitely something that you think about. Uh, you don't want to be the reason somebody gets in over somebody else, right? So... Uh, unless that, you know, and is taken a win away from somebody. So, uh, you know, points wise and, and, you know, other cars, you, you definitely will for, or at least I will, um, you know, be a little more cautious around some of those cars that are, you know, right there on the cutoff line for, for points. Um, you know, some, some Chevy guys are, are racing for, uh, you know, wins, you got, um, you got buddies that, uh, are, are trying to, you know, make the playoffs and, and things like that. So you try and try and be respectful of, of those guys, uh, but know that, you know, we still have a job to do and, um, and, and try and, you know, take some points away from other people as well. Thank you. All right. Last question right up here. Mike Brodsky, Florida National News. Uh, Ricky, following up on your mention about the, uh, the Walk of Fame, how did it feel putting your hands and feet in the concrete? And what does it mean to you to, personally to be part of that Walk of Fame here at Daytona? It was cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, you know, I've never, I don't think at any construction sites I've ever put my hands or feet in uh, concrete. I don't think <laughs> I've, I don't think I've done that as a kid. Um but no, that was that was really cool. And then, you know, I'd say it gets more real every time you know something happens, or you know, you you go into uh, the museum and you know you know see your face uh, a lot on the wall there with with all the other winners of the Daytona 500, and knowing that that that's going to stay there. Um, and you know, just like the uh, Walk of Fame out there, um, you know, to know that that's going to be there. Um, you know, I guess until they decide to tear it up, um, you know, is, is really special. And that's, you know, I feel like that's what the, you know, the, the Daytona 500 is, right. It's, it's something that, um, you know, sticks with you in your career, um, you know, for, for the longevity of it. And, you know, I think no other race does that. And, uh, you know, except for winning a championship in, in the sport. And so that was one that, you know, we're, we're super proud of and, you know, but that's also, what makes it, you know, so important and, and so special to everybody. And so, you know, for me, I'm glad that we, we, we accomplished that already. And, and now, you know, coming back to Daytona more relaxed, but also more confident is, uh, is something that's, you know, nice to go along with it as well.